Um, if you would please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Councilor Donovan? Present. Councilor Rowan? Here. Councilor Foley? Here. Councilor St. Clair? Here. Councilor Hayes? Here. Councilor Chiazzo? Here. Chairman Baybine? Here. And the uh, only item on tonight's um, order is order number 17-063, second reading on the fiscal year 2018 municipal and school budget as presented by the town manager. Before we begin and open it up to comments, public comments, I do want to um, give um, notice that we only have about a, an hour time frame this evening because there is a school board meeting immediately afterwards in which they will be taking up the issue of their cost reductions. Uh, so we would like to be mindful of the time restrictions that we do have, but I would now like to open it up to any public comments. If you'd like to make a comment, if you could please come up to the podium, state your name and your address, um, it would be appreciated. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this is a new day. Right. Well, uh, I'm Karam Durda. I'm from uh, Six Haystack Circle. And uh, thank you for the hard work and uh, keeping the One Town, One Budget initiative uh, forward moving and continuing and consistent. I, I urge you not to deviate from the principles established, and I'm thankful for your demonstrated verbal commitment to keep school funding commensurate with what is required by this Scarborough of ours. Just want to take a couple of minutes and at least tell you what is this requirement by the Scarborough of ours as I see it that I think you need to translate it to paper. It is to progressively entrench a sense of economic development and job creation contingent on the education of our kids. Scarborough is lagging a little behind in this. See how the towns of Sanford and South Portland are articulating that they understand economic development drivers and its linkages to a healthy education pipeline of talent and know-how. I urge you to do that. Um, this entire world of broader main-based discussions and conversations that I'm well part of, and let me assure you that the current Scarborough situation has an inertial break on what will potentially yield generational dividends. Policy approaches of tax reduction and cost cutting I leave for better angels who are hopefully well informed beyond their own ideological limitations, including mine. But I do want to urgently and vociferously point out that the divisiveness of our community can be healed by facts, due lack of insistent robocalls and jettisoning of coercive approaches. So lead, please lead. Fund as you feel is appropriate and to the levels that is required. Let go of the gentrification of thought, erase this toxicity, divisively renew our faith in this social contract that is eroding, and keep me as a taxpayer living in this town. Okay. Thank you. Be well. Thank you. Anybody else that would like to speak? Anybody else? Going once, twice, we'll close the public comment. What I would like to uh, do is invite Superintendent Kuchenberger to the podium for a uh, overview of, uh, we had a conversation before regarding a uh, online survey that was conducted by her department. So if she can give us some details on that, that would be great. I did uh, create a presentation that will be available on our website that um, is basically an executive summary of the 720 responses that we received to our quick um, community feedback regarding the budget vote. And so um, the intent behind the survey, I said this at the, the first reading meeting and um, since then, at that time we had like 496 responses, since then we've gotten a couple hundred more. Um, I, I think it's important to clarify that this is not scientific. It's something I made up just to hear our community um, better and to understand why folks were coming out to vote or not, and if they were supporting the budget, why, and if they weren't supporting the budget, why. Um, so it was really just an opportunity for us to gain a little more insight and to create opportunity for voice um, with our stakeholders. And so um, I, I just remind us of that because, again, as I'm sharing this data, 
I want to make sure that we're not relying heavily on this as like the source of data. Obviously, we had over 4,000 voters. There were 720 people who were able to respond to this um, quick survey. So not, um, again, a, a, a def not a definite representation of our community. So who did actually take the survey? Um, we had, like I said, 720 responses and 60.7 uh, percent of the responses were community members who currently have children enrolled in the schools. The next largest group of responders were um, Scarborough residents who are 55 or older and at 20.1 percent. And then we had 12.2 percent of the respondents who were residents who do not have any school aged children at all. Um, 1.8 percent are residents with children who, school aged children, but they're not enrolled in our schools and then um, the rest are just in a category of other, it includes some faculty um, who, who took the, the survey as well because it went out through our internal email. So of the 720 responses, 83 are, I'm sorry, 84.3% or I'll just round the numbers to make it easier to hear. I know it's hard to sometimes process all these numbers over um, auditorily, but 84% of the respondents said yes, I did go out and vote. Um, on June 13th and 15.7% said no. And so this is what we really wanted to know. Like who, why did you come out? Why didn't you come out? So um, the first question we asked after that was if you didn't vote, why not? Um, and then you'll see there on that executive summary, I just uh, calculated in percentages for you, knowing that some people could respond in more than one way. Um, and then if you remember back at the first reading, there were um, like, four emerging themes and then several like one-offs where people had checked other and typed in their own comments. So what I've been doing since that last presentation was going back and coding that data because although people typed in open-ended responses, some of them fit into some of the other categories. So the top reason, um, based on the 111 responders who said that they didn't vote, the top reason was that I support schools but couldn't bring myself to vote for a tax increase. And then um, the second reason was that I um, didn't know what the vote was regarding or some other sort of response that said I was confused, or I didn't know what information was what, or um, I just don't trust the process. So they chose not to vote. 13.5% um, of these 111 responders said that they were out of town, um, or I'm sorry, out of time. So they were planning to vote on June 13th and for whatever reason, got sick, got injured, got caught up at work, they were not able to, um, to vote on that day. And then 11.7 um, said that they were out of town. And some folks, 7.2% said they didn't think it mattered. And that could have been because they, they didn't think it was, they thought it was going to pass or because they didn't, it never passes on the first vote. So um, they didn't think they needed to come out and vote. So the next question that uh, folks were asked were that if you did vote and you supported the budget, why? And so again, in cleaning up some of this data, people would say, I didn't vote here, so uh, the percentages aren't going to equal a total of 100% when you're looking at it, and some people also checked more than one response. So I just gave you the top three responses, um, and 82.9% of the people who voted and supported the budget said that they understood that the tax increase would be 3.49% and felt that it was reasonable. 15.4% um, of the respondents, and there were 428 to this question, said that um, they were unclear on the tax increase but voted yes to support the schools. And then um, another one that emerged in the individual comments was this concern about the long-term ability to support our schools or to fund our schools. Um, and there were different variations of what those responses looked like, but I coded them in this category. So the next thing we wanted to learn about was if you voted but you did not support the budget, why? Um, and there were 196 responses to this question. And so again, remember there, um, if if you're going back to who didn't vote, um, the number was much lower than that. There were only, or there were 113 people who didn't vote, but some people checked more than one response. So just to kind of help you make sense of the numbers when you're looking at that. Um, so the number one res response at 56.6% was that I knew the tax rate was estimated at 3.49%, but felt that it was too high. The second um, most popular response was that I'm against any tax increase at all, and that was 26.5% of the respondents. 
Um, the third response was a combination of either I was, I was frustrated with some other school-related issue or some other town-related issue. Um, and some folks would say things in, when looking at this data that, for example, um, oops, I'm sorry, that they felt like they, the, they didn't, they think the town is spending too much as a whole, but the only place they get to have a voice is on the school budget. And so they're, they're saying no um, for that reason and other reasons as well. And then the fourth um, response was that the red signs that stated 7.4% increase around town influenced my vote, and that was 14.2% um, of the respondents to that question. The next question was, how could we best communicate and share accurate budget information with you prior to the next school budget vote? And so 700 and all responders um, to the survey responded to this question, so there were 720 responses. The number one, um, this data hasn't really changed much from what it was when we were looking at the preliminary data, except the percentages are different. Um, so number one, publish information in the Scarborough Leader. 76% said that is the best place for us to be doing it. 52% said Facebook. 48% said mail information to my house, um, and then 30% said do television interviews with local news channel, channels. And so then um, the, the part that I found really interesting were not only the one-off responses that people would type in, but at the end there was a, an opportunity for people to just open-endedly type in um, any additional comments, and 234 responders chose to type in some comments there. And I um, originally was going to print all of the responses for us, but it was like 128 pages with, you know, having all of the data. So I think that that would be something that's really important for us to review as a, a joint town council school board finance committee, but um, just couldn't bring myself to hit the print button <laughs> for all those copies. But we do have that available, and um, both of the finance chairs have that. So, and so do the, so does um, Councilor Babine and, um, School Board Chair Kelly Murphy. So we can share that electronically. I think that's probably the best way for us to look at that. But I think that um, already this has given me some ideas about how to improve communication. There's still some things, some questions that were reoccurring. Um, for example, why does school spending keep going up if enrollment's declining? And so that to me is um, something that we can provide evidence and answers to. Uh, when you look at our enrollment data, although it is lower than it was years ago, it is actually starting to increase and it is exceeding the projections of the, um, the long-range enrollment projections that we did with planning decisions. So that's actually an interesting data point that I monitor monthly and share at the school board meetings monthly. So um, we can get that information out to folks in, in a really um, user-friendly way. And then I also think that um, throughout this process, obviously, I have learned a lot, and I'm continuing to learn as we get to the next uh, referendum vote. So I'm keeping myself a little journal of different um, ideas and things to think about and ways to communicate better. So I think um, the comments that you see here also give us some lessons in, in how we can better connect with our community and better serve them ultimately at the end. Great. So that's the survey in a nutshell. Any questions or clarif clarifying uh, questions from council members? Great. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Superintendent. <clears throat> and if I could have a motion on order number 17-063, the second reading of the fiscal year 2018 municipal school budget. Is there a motion? So moved. moved. And a second. And um, for tonight's discussion, the council has, um, as, as is customary, councilors have submitted in advance for proper languaging um, any amendments that they chose or wanted us to um, approach um, and discuss. And so the councilors do have um, I think it's four, one, two, three, four amendments that have been proposed. Um, one of them comes from our joint, uh, um, our joint uh, council meeting, which is the first amendment, and then there's several others. So we will take them in order. Um, and I will make the first motion if we would accept um, amendment number one. Um, I'm not going to read the entire order, but under the be a further order that the town budget is hereby amended to be reduced by $71,000. Recommended target adjustments are as follows, $22,300 from planning wages and benefits, $12,300 from human resources wages and benefits, $8,400 from public works wages and benefits, 
$8,000 from benefit adjustments and $20,000 from capital projects within community services for a net operating budget of $32,589,519 resulting in the local share for the municipal budget the sum of $18,167,935. And if there is a second? Second. Conversation. Um, just for a public overview, um, if you didn't get a chance, we did have a workshop of the council as a whole. Um, the manager came forward with these recommendations, which are non-programmatic. It's purely administrative. Um, they were the least painful in being able to uh, come to those recommendations. And if I can summarize, I believe that most of them um, were a result of adjustments and um, uh, uh, timing within the budget based upon new hires for key uh, <coughs> personnel and the changes that result from that. Anything that you would like to add to that? No, the only, only addition to that would be uh, uh, delaying a capital project for a carpet Apologies. replacement. That, that's something this council perhaps will take up in future years. Any comments from council? Questions? Council Rowan. I think I think that uh, you know we discussed this at length at the workshop last week. Um, it seemed like they were pretty reasonable adjustments, and uh, I, I feel like the consensus was there that this was reasonable and appropriate. Okay. Councilor Foley. Um, yeah, I would agree. These seem like pretty mundane um, changes, and you know, my original position was that we not dip into the municipal budget at all, as, as people are aware. But as long as we were, um, you know, my preference probably would have been to go into um, some things where I think we may have misstepped, and things we could have done differently. Um, but I also appreciate the work that Tom uh, did on this, and uh, you know, these are cost savings that we would have recognized anyway um, so it doesn't doesn't really change uh, at least what we're able to offer for the most part for services for the community um, so from that regard and from that perspective I appreciate that Councilor Donovan I, I support it uh, because uh, I think sharing the burden with the schools is appropriate mm -hmm. uh, and I support it because they're non-controversial uh, and therefore uh, uh, don't raise issues outside the goal that we're seeking to achieve, which is to contribute some cuts uh, that uh, would thus not have to be borne by the schools. Councilor. Hey, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was looking at you. I didn't. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Um, I just kind of echo what has been said. I mean, we did have a good conversation about this in our workshop. I know at the first reading, I was uncomfortable necessarily opening the municipal budget without a better understanding of what types of items we were talking about. And as, as other councilors have suggested, these seem to be things that are more timing issues, really aren't going to impact any delivery of essential services for the town. So I'm also comfortable with, with moving forward with this, this motion. Great. Any other councilor? Councilor St. Clair? Sure. Um, I, I also will support this. I'm, you know, I'm concerned that while I realize that these are what we're calling mundane budget cuts um, and that they aren't going to have a large impact on the town at this point, I'm very concerned about what happens if we don't pass again. Um, and I'm worried about not only us, but the, I know the school board has a large task in front of them. Um, and I just think that <coughs> we really need to get the word out and start working towards this as a, as a unit and as a whole and as a team approach because I don't want to see another round of this happening. If there are no other comments, um, all in favor of the motion? And that is unanimous. Thank you. Uh, proposed amendment number two is, um, I will read this um, since I'm the one that proposed it. Um, under the section B of further ordered, uh, the changes be it further ordered that in the event that the Scarborough School Department receives more state education subsidy than the amount included in its budget, that pursuant to section, and there are a lot of J's, um, J, 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 J-4 of the state biennial budget, that 50% of the increase in state education subsidy be allocated to lower the local contribution to the total cost of funding education and thereby provide property tax relief for fiscal year 2018 and the remaining 50% be allocated to the school capital reserve fund pursuant to Title 20-A, MRSA 15690-A1. If there's a second, I will explain second. the purpose. Thank you. 
So in reading the um, legislative uh, kind of direction from the budget approval, um, really the, uh, the budget, um, just to kind of break it down from what I understand, is that $48 million has been additionally allocated for this fiscal year across the board for all the state, and $115 million, I believe? $14. $114 million next year. We do not know what our portion is going to be from either one of those based upon the formula, so um, there's presumably some amount that's coming. But that legislation also gives specific direction under two sections, A and B. The first section says that 50% of the allocation must go to lower the local property tax related to the cost of education. The second section has three subsections that says that the remaining 50% should be allocated in one of three categories. It can either be used in the current cycle to increase, co in to increase services and therefore cover costs, <coughs> additional costs. It could be uh, put into a reserve fund, and based on what I understand, that must be a capital reserve fund. Or the third is that it could actually be allocated to lower, to be allocated and used to lower existing funding for education, meaning additional property tax relief. I'm proposing the 50-50 because that was the original intent of the budget negotiations and discussion that we had with the school board. I think it's also in good faith with what the public has come to understand that we need to be. And I don't believe that 100% of this should go to lower the property tax. Um, if anything, the relief is, depending on the amount, um, given some of the capital projects that could be coming forward in the next couple of years, or at least next year, I think there's a, um, a, a technology refresh coming up that's pretty substantial. Um, this is a nice savings that will go into a capital reserve that can be used to fund equipment or fund other projects within the school department and uh, keeps within the intent of what the Joint Finance Committees um, initially proposed and sent out to the voters. So that's the logic behind the proposal. Questions and comments from Council? Council Chiazza? Yeah, well, I, I, uh, I, I appreciate the, the amendment. Um, it doesn't sound like we have a whole lot of uh, options at this point. Um, I'm yet again disappointed with the reaction from Augusta because not only did they not listen to the public and support 55% or the surcharge, but they're now mandating that any additional funds that we get have to go towards tax relief, which again caps our ability to be fiscally responsible. Uh, I supported the 100% going to the fund balance for the specific reason that it was a tangible number that we knew about and we could reasonably and, and uh, clearly predict what number that was going to be for next year and use that appropriately. So um, I'm going to support the amendment uh, only because it's really not, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a halfway compromise, which I can respect and appreciate. Uh, I certainly wouldn't support anything more than that going to property tax relief this year. Um, who knows what will happen next year, but at least we'll have the reserves or the extra should we get more money to be able to address that issue next year with a tangible number when we know what the revenue sharing is going to be. Just that's an important point. The, the requirements that Councillor Babine uh, elucidated uh, do apply for the second year of the biennium as well. The difference will be is that you'll have knowledge of what the what those amounts are and be able to make some yeah. uh, more informed decisions, perhaps. Councillor Rowan, it's not clear to me how next year that's going to be happen from a practical matter because it'll be a new budget that will be have new expenses associated with it, so I'm not sure exactly how they're going to dictate that this pool of money goes toward property tax relief, but we could, you know, it doesn't have any impact on limits to spending, um, so it doesn't make any sense. Um, I think that I love the idea sure. that this that we're sharing uh, with um, for property tax relief, relief. I like it, um, but my concern is that we're taking two bites at property tax relief uh, by bringing this in. Um, so that we're doing, you know, we're cutting $307,000 from the budget and we're doing 50% toward um, uh, property tax relief. Um, you know, I, I wish we had more information uh, today, tonight, uh, so that we can make rational decisions. Um, so I, I, but I feel like we don't have a choice about this particular amendment. This is what we have to do because this is what the statute says we have to do. Um, so I have an amendment uh, coming later, which will, uh, which I'll talk about at the time. But for the moment, I'm going to support this this amendment. Councilor Foley. Um, yeah, I, for many of the reasons stated by Councilor Rowan, I'm going to support this amendment as well. I, I actually would love to see us take an approach um, in the future or consider thinking more around aligning it to our one budget, one town concept, and that would be a two-thirds, one-third um, 
split because I think it's a consistent piece that the community could understand and get behind. Um, I understand we can't, we don't even, and I'm not really appreciative of the fact that we don't have the control over what we want, how do we want this to go. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not concerned if we get below 3%, if we get closer to 2.5 and 2%, Overall, I'm going to be extremely happy and I'm going to feel very much more confident that we're going to be successful in getting our budget passed this time because, quite frankly, I'm concerned that even at 3%, um, I, I don't want to go to around 3 So, anyway, that's where I'm on this. Any other com Councilor Hayes? Yeah, and I think I just, you know, kind of echo the same comments. Um, <clears throat> we don't have a lot of choice. I think this is the right thing to do. and. Just by symmetry or, or it's kind of ironic, this is where the joint finance committees had kind of gotten to originally, so there's some real symmetry to this, but we'll support this at this point. Councilor Donovan? Uh, I will support it. Uh, the new budget law does appear to mandate that at least 50% uh, of the funds that were provided by the new budget uh, be used for tax relief in the present year. We just found that out today. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, uh, our hands are tied in that regard. I share Councillor Caezo's concern that we've got some very difficult budgets ahead, uh, saving as much money in fund balance once we get down to the two, two and a half to three percent range, which we're at now. Uh, uh, is the prudent, fiscally responsible thing to do so as to protect uh, schools and their programs uh, in the years to come. And I'm very concerned about next year's budget. So uh, if we had the right to do it, I would make 100% of the money go to fund balance, but that doesn't appear to be the case. Thank you. Other comments? Just in terms of clarity as to what those amounts are, I don't... Don't quote me exactly, but I think the Department of Education does have a timeline by which they need to report out uh, to all communities what, what the effect of this is, and it's quite likely and, and I think possible that that number will be known before the validation vote on the 25th. Of course, the question that begs is how do you communicate that out? Uh, but with certainty, uh, what you've done so far by way of amendment is brought the project projected tax uh, rate increase below 3% for sure, and it's likely to get better. The question is how much mm -hmm. and how do we communicate that? Should we know that before the vote? Uh, that will be something we should perhaps uh, take up at a later date. Any other comments? <coughs> Councilor Rowan? So I, I think that uh, I think that it's a detriment that we will that we don't know what it is tonight and we will know about it before we vote. I think that, that now we are making we have to make decisions based on the future that we don't we don't know what they are, um, and I would also like to say that it's dependent upon the, the property valuation when that comes back to. Not seeing any other questions, I'm going to call the motion. All in favor? And that is unanimous. Thank you. And Councilor Foley, the next amendment is yours. Would I'm you like to present that? I'm okay. good. We're going to skip over that request, and I'll move to, uh, I'll turn it over to Councilor Rowan if you would like to present your amendment. Uh, I'm sorry? So I, I, I'd like to bring uh, Councilor Foley's amendment forward. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. okay. Absolutely. Sorry. I'll second it. All right. So, <laughs> so just to read. Yep. So no, so nicely done. <laughs> this is, this is a, a, uh, a, I think, a carefully considered budget order. Um, the motion is to move approval to amend the main motion as amended to add $6,000 to reinstate the additional weekly beach cleaning at Pine Point and to offset these expenses with $6,000 in additional revenue from the investment uh, income account, resulting in no change to the net budget. <coughs> and there's uh, a second. I second. Okay. And so, Council Rowan. So my explanation is I, I think we made a mistake uh, when we cut that second uh, beach cleaning. Um, and I think that if we can offset, if we can re restore that and offset it with um, uh, investment income that we would have realized anyway, I think we ought to, and that should at least be considered. Any other comments, Council Foley? Well, I obviously will support it. Um, I do I f agree. I think we made a mistake. It is, you know, in the big scheme of everything, it is such a small amount, um, but it makes a big difference uh, for that community and tourist dollars that come here and tourist dollars that we want coming back next year. Um, so uh, I, my hesitancy in putting it forward was um, 
somewhat to honor what other counselors have uh, expressed around not wanting to reopen controversial cans of worms. So uh, that's part of why I did not offer it. Um, and also, you know, playing with revenue lines and, and switching things around. Um, but I, I think it, there's no net change. It's pretty simple, and I think it's the right thing to do, so I will support it. If I could, through the chair to the manager, um, what exactly is the amount in the investment income, and is this a projected amount, or is this a hard, fast number? Uh, Ruth Porter, finance director, is here, and this is one of the areas that she was confident that uh, our current budget projections uh, are understated. Some of that has to do with recent changes to the Fed interest rate and how those trickle down to us. But these are essentially uh, interest earnings we make on cash we have invested. Uh, so this is uh, very comfortably um, uh, an area that we could increase. I, I can't quote off the top of my head what that current investment account uh, revenue projection is. Uh, I'm sure Ruth could if, if you want to know. I, no, it's, it's, I mean, it's, I'm, my, I guess my real question is, um, you know, is this a projection that is a sustainable projection or is it something like excise tax that is variable? And if that extra is, re is realized, and it's not used for beach cleaning, does it go into the fund reserve? The fund balance, does it go towards fund balance? No, certainly, it would, it be, uh, it would be received as revenue that was unexpected and, and uh, un not needed, to, so it would become fund balance, yes. Okay. Councilor Hayes. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with some of the comments made. I do support this. I, I don't know how technically to add it. Is there a way to just to kind of say if needed in this? I mean. We originally thought you didn't necessarily need that second cleaning, so rather than do it if we don't need to, just kind of leave it to the discretion, if possible. That, but that may be a, a scheduling issue that gets really good. That's really what it comes down to. What, what we've done by way of accommodation, unless you do reinstate the monies, uh, we have uh, spoken directly to that beachfront community, and we will do everything within our power, uh, <laughs> short of a regular scheduled service, mm -hmm. to attend to problems as they crop up. And we'll continue to honor that commitment. Uh, regardless of what you do here. The difference here is that we'll actually schedule crews uh, uh, an additional cleaning on Wednesdays on July and August as a matter of mm -hmm. the normal routine. Councilor Rowan. I'd just like to speak to the need. I, I spent um, several hours in the water at Ferry Beach on Monday, uh, and uh, you can see the little balls of red algae mm -hmm. like floating in. Mm -hmm. I've never seen it this bad, uh, mm -hmm. so I would uh, say that it's, it's likely going to be needed based on one person's observation. Councilor Chiazzo. Yeah, I'm, I mean, uh, again, I, uh, my concern with this is that, um, you know, we've already deliberated these issues. There were a whole cadre of controversial, for lack of a better word, issues that we addressed. Um, my concern would be, would be if we reopen this and address that, the other corrections and changes that we made, it's viable and reasonable for someone to come back and say, well, you reinstated that, why don't you reinstate my special program or what I thought was important that you cut from the budget. So I think from a consistency standpoint, I, I respect the, 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 the meaning behind it. I think um, the way we accommodated that, the original uh, change was that staff would uh, accommodate that as needed. Uh, my concern is that if we put it in and schedule it and it's automatically used, you know, whether we need it or not, I'm not so sure that's really viable or, or necessary, especially when we're, we're nitpicking stuff. I mean, I know it's a, it's a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a $71 million budget and it's $6,000, but again, um, I think if we, can, if we can find a way to adapt and meet those needs without um, reopening something, then uh, I, I, I'd prefer to do that. So I, I cannot support the motion, I'm sorry. Also, St. Clair. Um, I'm going to support this without a doubt. Um, I think it's almost ludicrous the amount of money we spend um, in some of our beach communities. And the Pine Point community came to us and, and begged us meeting after meeting to please help them and put this back in the budget. And um, I, I absolutely see no reason why we cannot accommodate that. Anybody else? Tons of Donovan. Uh, I support solving the problem if it arises. I think that it's a concern, and if it does arise, the town manager and the uh, DPW director have the uh, ability and authority to solve that problem. 
but I do not support re-debating $6,000 items. Uh, at this point, we're here to find uh, $71,000 worth of the cuts, not reopen uh, a broad discussion of debate on items that were fully debated previously. Uh, I'm also not comfortable uh, finding another $6,000 to offset it when that money would be received in any case. We would be receiving that money uh, no matter what, and it would be used for fund balance. Uh, which is something from a fiscal responsibility point of view, uh, we need to be very conscious of. So I will not support this. Um, <clears throat> so um, to, be, to speak at last, um, so it's, it's a $92 million total budget all in. To um, spend as much time on debate around $6,000 seems a little bit um, um, cumbersome. Um, I have mixed feelings about reopening as well because this, I think, is a, an emotional reaction rather than a policy discussion. Um, I think that um, at the same time, understanding how the budget process works, the manager does have the discretion to spend on a line item basis um, as long as there are allocations within the budget elsewhere. So if he does need that, he does have that authority. And then at the end of the year, we approve those adjustments as part of the regular uh, fiscal year end and part of the adjustments. So there is a mechanism. Um, for that, um, again, this is a uh, $6,000 adjustment. There is a revenue. I'm probably going to vote in favor of it because it's been identified. I, I have a little bit of a problem with why it's even here tonight, but that's beside the point. We have got a bigger issue to deal with. Yes, sir. So not to belabor now that several people have said that we're spending too much time debating it, but <laughs> I just wanted to bring up one more point, uh, and that is the reason why I think that it was a mistake that we cut it was we just added it last year, and then we turned I around and we, cut, we pulled the rug out from underneath that community with, with, their, uh, with that extra cleaning that they've been asking for for quite a long time, and yep. I feel it's needed. Right. Any other questions or comments? Not seeing any, all in favor of the motion. All opposed? Two, five to two. Thank you. Moving on to the Fourth Amendment, um, I will uh, turn this over to Councillor Rowan. Thank you. So uh, I wanted to warm up with a, with a controversial <laughs> amendment before I add my, my next one. Um, so uh, I'm going to give the explanation um, uh, first and then, and then talk about it, or a brief explanation first, then talk about it, and then make my argument during, once it's on the table. Um, so uh, as I stated earlier, I think, I think that if we're adding the um, the 50% share to reduce the property tax back in um, that um, that now that we know that the legislature has acted and that there is significant revenue coming for the current budget cycle, which is something we didn't know during the first vote um, and we didn't know during our first reading. Uh, but we know that now. We don't know what the number is, but we know that it's coming. Um, and so therefore, I, I feel like the um, the appropriate, that it's inappropriate to be cutting the education budget, or the town budget for that matter, uh, when we have more revenue coming. When, when I feel like the, uh, the, the budget went down at the first vote for, because of the, the revenue. It was the, we saw the signs, 7.4%. It was about the, the net revenue, which was largely due um, to the loss in revenue. Well, now that revenue has been restored. Um, and I feel like when it goes to the voters, that number will be significantly lower. Um, and that therefore, we can put the budget back out uh, to the voters uh, at the same level that it was originally. Um, and so the, the, uh, the change, it changes, um, it changes the whereas clause, uh, the first, excuse me, the fourth whereas clause to say that whereas the state biennial budget was approved on July 4th, 2017, and such budget includes $162 million in additional state subsidy toward the cost of K-12 education, $48 million of which is designated to fiscal year 2018, However, the exact dollar amount of additional subsidy for Scarborough is not known in this time. Um, uh, now, therefore, be it ordered that in view of this additional funding, no further reduction to the town, excuse me, to the school or town budgets are likely required to reach the town council's tax rate increase goal of 3% or less. Uh, crosses out a bunch of stuff. And then it says, be it further ordered that the original budget be put back to the voters for further consideration as the result of the additional state subsidy and will likely produce a uh, proje projected property tax rate increase of 2.99% or less. Is that in the form of a motion? That is in the form of a motion. Is there a second? Second. 
and just for clarification for the public who don't see our documents, the sections that he said there's a lot of line throughs <laughs> um, is actually um, everything that was uh, primarily in the first amendment. So all of the line items that we identified for the adjustments on the town side um, will be stricken as well as the B further, um, the actual 236,000 that's identified in the first <coughs> be it further ordered that would be stricken as well. So just for clarification, those are the, the impact of what he has um, asked for. Council comments? Council Rowan? Um, so <coughs> um, there are a number of reasons why I, I feel like this is, this is a valid uh, argument to make. Um, you know, again, we're, we're going to see a significant revenue from the state. We don't know what it is. Um, but for the sake of comparison, um, last year, when the initial budget projection came, when the initial uh, subsidy was calculated, um, Scarborough was originally going to receive uh, $3,089,000 uh, and change. Um, then the state legislature uh, toward, I think the April time frame, I don't recall exactly, but they put $20 million in, in, in addition to the, the original biennium. Uh, and then the, the resulting tax increase was uh, 3.5, excuse me, uh, GPA subsidy turned out to be uh, $3.5 uh, million. Um, excuse me, 3.5889 and change. Uh, and the, um, so if you look at based on last year's formula and, and last year's funding, when they put in $20 million, we got a half million bucks. So if you use the same ratio and you say, okay, well, they're putting in $48 million, therefore, we should see something on the order of $1.2 million. Now, we're based on the governor's per, uh, formula that he put out with his uh, proposed budget in January, which is still the only thing that we have to work with. We were a minimum receiver to the tune of $700,000 in the hole. Um, the uh, budget that was passed two days ago, yesterday, mm -hmm. um, at, the, at the state level, um, uh, also made some changes to the formula, but they were different than the governor's changes. So we don't know. Um, again, what the impact of those formula changes will be. Um, but it stands to reason that somewhere between 500000 and $1.2 <coughs> million dollars are coming uh, into the town of Scarborough in terms of revenue. Um, which if you, again, not that I agree with the methodology of the uh, signs that were put out around town, but the 7.4% uh, number would be greatly reduced with, with that type of revenue increase. Um, even if you split it 50-50. Um, and just to explain why I don't agree with that, I think that, um, that uh, the reason that I think that that's the wrong number to look at um, is that the, uh, the, um, the argument's been made that that net school budget represents the taxes that have to be raised um, to, um, uh, to fund schools. And my point, and the point that I made at, at first reading, was that that would only be true if we had stagnant valuation and if we had property taxes as our only source of non-taxable revenue. Um, so it's the sum that we have to raise at a local level, um, but it doesn't account for the non-education revenues, which are up over $650,000 in this budget, the homestead exemption reimbursements, which are up $125,000 in this budget, the business equipment tax exemption, which is up $40,000 in this budget, the state municipal revenue sharing, which is up $50,000 in this budget, um, and, and the most important factor that it ignores is the, uh, the projected valuation growth of, at the midpoint, $49 million, which would generate $812,000 in new tax revenue. And it's important to note that this valuation growth is the biggest factor in our declining GPA allocation. Um, uh, the other argument in favor of um, minimizing the school cut is that will no longer be a minimum receiver. And so we're going to be right back on that, you know, slippery declining slope of uh, declining GPA allocation on an annual basis. Um, and so therefore I think that it's important that we, you know, hold back funds for future years. Other comments? Council Chiazzo. Um, just making a couple quick notes. So. Um, very compelling argument, Councilor Rowan. Um, I, 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 in spirit, I, I agree with it 100%. But I think the, the challenge that we face as a finance group and as a council and as a town is 
uh, goal we had was predictable and sustainable tax increases. And I think, you know, to your argument, using um, you know, the same ratio doesn't really apply because the formula has changed, and we really just don't know what's coming from the state. And I think um, we also have to look beyond the ideology to the reaction from the vote. And I think that by not making any adjustment at all to, to the budget, while I would support that 100% personally, I, I think that's not necessarily going to help us garner favor with the public and get this vote passed, or this budget passed like we need to. So um, I just think there's way too many intangibles right now. There's too many things in flux. Um, I, I think at this point we, we're going to deliver. Our goal was 3% or less. And I've said to a T from the very beginning, if it's 3%, in good years it's 3%, and in bad years it's 3%, because it's predictable and sustainable and consistent. And I was hoping that that's what the reserve funds would allow us to do, to act as that buffer, so that we're not continuously reacting year to year on what the state does, that we delay one of our goals was to try and project out a year or two. So if we take that additional revenue and put it in fund balance, which we could have up until yesterday, we can use that to project for the next year, and we have a more of a controlled environment than we do now. So um, I, I appreciate the, the intent. I really do. Um, I, I can't support that because I think, A, I, there's no real hard numbers to put behind it, and, and B, I, I don't know if that's necessarily going to help us garner more support in the community to pass the budget. Councilor Hayes. Yeah, and I think I, I'll kind of echo and agree with Councilor Hayes and the others. I know all of us have worked pretty hard to say to, to try to get some detail. And there have been three or four sources that have really said that are closer to it than we are, that they're, just to echo, there's just too many unknowns. There's some formula changes. A lot of people are saying we've heard lots of numbers kind of put out there, but it's really hard to know where that number is going to be. And I think I think the town manager made reference to it. From what I understand, there is there's a critical variable that will be determined by the Department of Education, but not to the 21st of, they don't have to do it until the 21st of July, which just puts it awful close. And what, if we want to get to yes, I, I think I kind of echo, I think this is just too much of an unknown. I think if we put it out at this without having those numbers when the voters go to the polls, if you look at the survey results and other things, I don't think that gets us to yes. So I, I think for those reasons, I applaud the thought. If we knew more information, that would be great, but we're looking at a pretty collapsed time frame. So I, I couldn't support that as it is. Councilor Donovan? Uh, I 100% support the sentiment. Uh, the, uh, the last referendum was flawed, uh, but the vote was taken and the vote has to be honored. Uh, I do not want to put us in a position where we risk having a second referendum not adopted and by not having any uh, cuts from the school board, from the school budget, uh, we run that risk. I'm told that no student services are going to be undermined by the cuts that are occurring, and so I'm supportive of the approach that the school apparently is going to discuss later this evening. Uh, and uh, at this point, no, I, uh, I think we have to uh, honor the vote that some cut has to occur. Councilor Rowan? Um, so I just wanted to respond to a couple points. Um, the, I think the first was that uh, the tax rate be um, predictable and sustainable. I think that uh, with the split of the new revenue that's coming gets us below <coughs> the, um, gets us below the 3%, um, comfortably below, even, even if we don't have the 307,000. Um, the other thing I just wanted to, to point out was, was on uh, May 4th, uh, the joint finance committees um, tasked the uh, the managers, the town manager and the superintendent, to cut an additional $250,000 so that we could get down to a 3.49% tax increase. Um, after we passed our our bond funding, that increased, um, and I don't recall the numbers exactly, but it was a, a $192,000 cut for the school, $127,000 cut for the town. Um, in order to get there, the the school department cut. Um, supplies budgets, they cut field trips, they cut textbook budgets, they cut professional development for, for their teachers, they cut a foster grandparent, 
uh, they cut a high school uh, math teacher and they cut uh, enrollment in the summer reading academy. And this is at a time where um, our, um, when you look at the handout that was passed out at our last meeting, um, our teacher salaries in 2016-2017, if you look at those with a college degree and 10 years of experience, they get paid about $83,000 in Portland and about $53,000 here in Scarborough. A uh, master's degree of 20 years in experience, uh, they also get paid $83,000 in Portland, which sounds a little, little uh, anyway, uh, they get paid $66,000 here in Scarborough. Um, so I want to point out that, that we're already um, behind some of the other towns. And this, this lists about uh, eight other towns in the area that have significantly higher wages uh, for teachers than we do. Um, Councilor Foley, you're next. Um, yeah, I, I would echo what others have said. I appreciate the sentiment. Um, I, timing is uh, sometimes everything. If we had had knowledge, uh, you know, a week ago, um, you know, one of the things I'll be honest that has been frustrating for me or that I'm concerned is that I haven't, I don't know what, where, where the Board of Direct or Education has come up with their 236. So I'm going to stay tonight and listen because I'm curious to know. Those things would influence um, how I feel about this, perhaps, knowing in advance what they are going further with in their cuts. But because I don't have that knowledge, uh, I really feel strongly. Another thing I've heard, you know, a lot of uh, rhetoric around, you know, the state not honoring the vote of the 3% and funding education the way they've been mandated to do. I feel like we have to do that at the local level as well. And part of that is really listening to our voters. And our voters did say no. And I feel I fear if we have no cuts, um, I, I'm trusting that the Board of Education has been thoughtful and not harming uh, in, in as much as they could. Um, and, and I would also just say this is, in some ways, it's for me, I'm looking at it like this is a lottery win. You know, if I won $10,000 tomorrow, I could go and take an extravagant trip and that $10,000 could be gone, or I can take that $10,000, pay down some of my other bills, and put it to save for a rainy day. And so we're lucky we're getting anything. I think we should be planning always as if we are min minimum receivers, and then when we get money back, um, move, be able to move things forward in that way. So I can't support it. I appreciate it. Um, Council Roy? So I, I just wanted to react to, to one um, uh, comment that Councillor Foley made, um, and that was that if if we plan, if we act as though we're minimum receivers, and then when we get money, we you know, use that to move forward. Well, we we got the money, and so I think we should be making that investment at this point and trying to move it forward. Um, I agree. The timing is awful. Um, I hate that we won't know until July. I think that we can make better decisions if we had facts, and we don't have them today, but we will have them at the time that we go to the polls. And if, you know, if we're sitting here with an additional, uh, you know, million bucks coming to us and a $236,000 cut in the school, I think we risk also having it not pass the other way. No. St. Clair? Um, uh, Council Rowan, I would support this wholeheartedly if we had Oh, even a sound whisper of what we were getting. Today I saw five from five different mm -hmm. sources, five different groups of numbers, and it was nauseating. Um, it, to me, shows uh, how horrible our communication is or how terrible Augusta is handling our schools and their budget. Um, I think it's unfair because they are now all on vacation because they are cheering because they passed their budget, but we still don't know what we're getting for numbers and we're here. Um, and to me, that's just maddening. Um, today, it was just, today, I just, I don't know, it was, it was sad because I, in my heart, I, I don't want to see these cuts. I don't want to see the cuts from the municipality side, and I just certainly don't want to see those cuts that we already saw that you, re that you read off and mentioned. When I sat down and looked at those first $250,000 cuts, it made me sick to my stomach. Um, and it, sometimes I wonder if the people that are um, being as critical as they are actually look at where the money is coming from, not just the bottom line. I don't know. I don't know if they take the time to do that. Um, 
I think it's just, it's almost like no matter what we do, we're never going to win. We're never going to make everybody happy. Um, it's painful for me to not see this actually for your motion to not move forward because I believe in it. I think it's in my heart the right thing to do because I believe that we're going to come in under 2.5. I think we are. And I don't think it's going to be because of Augusta. I just I think it's going to come from us. Um, we keep saying year after year we have a huge problem with Augusta and yet we're saying it again this year. And I don't know I don't know how to fix that. I hope I hope that the good people out there um, that are criticizing us and um, telling us that our numbers are bad and we're bad people and we must not care. I hope that they um, take a little time and go see Toadie and take out some election forms and run for office because maybe they can fix all the things that we're so terrible at fixing. Um, so I. I, I just I think it's just important to give you credit for doing for sticking your neck out like there because you probably knew that it wasn't going to pass coming into this and you fought for it and that's not an easy thing to do as a counselor so I really commend you for that um, and I really wish I could support it but I'm but I'm nervous I'm really nervous that if this were to pass and we were to ignore the voice of the voter it would be a horrible thing and it's not it's something I said I would never ever do and at this point we have to respect the people that took the time to vote. So before I come back to you I'd like to speak so that way maybe we do have four minutes about so if I can uh, add some comments and then maybe we can end with your final comments if there's anything I say that you'd want to add. Um, Councilor Rowan I think that this is an, um, uh, probably one of the best amendments um, that we should have had maybe a couple of meetings ago. Um, in fact, I recall making the statement that the roller coaster that we've been on has really been um, two ends of a very wide spectrum uh, or a pendulum swing in which, for me personally anyways, um, starting off as a joint member of the Finance Committee back in the committee process um, suggesting at that time that the entire cut um, or adjustment should come from education and we did that before the referendum. And saying the other end is that after the referendum question didn't pass and based upon what we didn't know, we should be putting back out the same budget once we have the numbers from Augusta. So I commend you because it's exactly on one end of the spectrum that I was thinking and was comfortable with. And in fact, the net effect is probably going to be what Councillor St. Clair said. I think it will be a little higher than 2.5%, but I think it's going to be well below what our original goal was. Um, the problem that I have is that it goes to the confidence of the process that we've undertaken, the dialogue that we've had with citizens, the impact of the citizens' vote, and I think that they need to have confidence um, in that process. I think the conversations we've had are meaningful, and I think that the adjustments that have been at least recognized on the town side, and from what I understand on the school side, will have minimal impact. At least I know on the town side it will have no impact to services. Um, so I see that there's still a net net benefit to that. Um, the only problem that I have, and not with this amendment, is I agree about the process as Council St. Clair. We started off in full agreement between both boards in which we were going to accept the notion that we are at minimal receivership. For us to react in somewhat of a um, knee-jerk reaction because now we're getting more money from the state seems to have dis uh, dismantled some of that joint process that we've undertaken. Um, because. That's why I supported the budget at the amount that it was. And by the way, I didn't like the full amount, but I came to the compromise. Because one of the things I have learned on this council is that um, we have to find that compromise. Augusta might not do that and put us through hell as they have in the past month, but we need to find the compromise for our citizens because it impacts them directly and immediately. So um, I, I hope that you will respect the fact that I won't be able to support the uh, amendment, but I do appreciate it extremely very much. Council Rowan. So I'd like to thank everyone for their kind comments. I wish I could thank you for your support, but uh, clearly that's not going to be the case. Um, but I, I would say that um, uh, what's different is just the context. So the context is that, that now we know that there's different funds coming, and at the time of the vote, we, should, we will likely know the amount that we're going to be receiving uh, from the state and GP allocation. Um, I think that um, um, I think I would disagree 
only to, to the uh, extent of the, um, what I'm thinking the impact is going to be. I think we're going to be well under 2.5% uh, uh, with the tax increase this year, and I think that's wonderful. I'm thrilled by that. Um, but I, I feel like I'm concerned with the, uh, what the school board is going to have to do at their next meeting, um, and I'd, I'd like to not force them to do that. We don't know what that's going to be. I also will stay tuned, uh, and um, um, with that, I yield the floor. Thank you. Seeing no other comments, uh, move the motion. All in favor of the amendment, please raise your hand. That's one. All opposed? No. Nope. I'm sorry, two? I apologize, Councillor. Um, all opposed? That is five. Thank you. Now back to the main motion as amended. Are there any other comments? Not seeing any. All in favor of the main motion as amended? Roll call. Oh, I'm, I apologize. It's a roll call vote. Councillor Cazzo? Yes. Councillor Hayes? Yes. Councillor St. Clair? Yes. Councillor Foley? Yes. Councillor Rowan? No. Councillor Donovan? Yes. And Chairman Baybine? Yes. And not seeing any other action items, I have one announcement before taking a motion to adjourn. Absentee ballots start tomorrow at Town Hall during regular business hours and go through the 20th of this month. The regular election is on July 25th. Um, and if there is no other um, business, um, I will entertain a, uh, accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor. And that is unanimous. Thank you.